Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I am Kishala. I hope you all are doing well. So this is about a career update that recently one of my paper got accepted uh, in a top 10 ML conference that is uncertainty in AI or EUAI 2023. And now if you follow my channel closely, then you know that whenever my paper got through in any conference or journal, I used to make a video regarding the whole process and about the overall experience of publishing a paper in a journal or conference. So this video will be about the process of this particular paper that how did I find the problem statement, you know, how was the initial days, what are the initial challenges that we have to face, how did we formulate the problem statement finally, then what, how, how long it takes to do all the experiments, finally how did I write the paper, then how was the reviews and finally you know how it got accepted. So everything about the process and my experience I am going to share uh, regarding this particular paper which got accepted in UI 2023. So if you are curious about this process, please stay tuned in this video till end. And before starting the video, as I always say, uh, please like this video if you have liked it and share this video to other people as well. And if you are new to this particular channel, please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever I upload a video, you will get instant notification. With the further ado, let's start into today's video. Now before jumping into sharing my actual experience of publishing this paper into this conference, I will give you a brief overview of this conference. So as I was saying, the name of this conference is Uncertainty in AI or UAI in short. Uh, which is a premier you know international conference for machine learning and representation learning typically every year in the first part of august this conference is to happen that means from 1st august to 15th august this is a typical time frame uh, where this conference is to happen any part of the world and this year ui 2023 it's 39th edition of this conference and it's happening between 31st july to 4th uh, august that means the first week of august it's happening and the place where it's happening is also very iconic uh, it's happening in kerning Mellon university or cmu uh, which is on the prestigious research institution for science and engineering which is located in pittsburgh Pennsylvania, usa so i'm very excited to you know go to that place to visit the campus along with presenting my paper in this conference. Now coming to the detail of this conference, this time in UI 2023, there are 778 paper submission and among them 243 got accepted. That means the acceptance rate is 31%. One thing I have to mention here is that this time my paper is not accepted for oral presentation, rather it is accepted for poster presentation. Now if you don't know the difference between oral and poster presentation in a conference, I will give a brief, brief idea about it here. So for oral presentation, the idea is typically in a presentation format, you have to present your work. That means you have to prepare your slide. Uh, you have to present uh, your slide uh, in, the, in the conference venue, uh, uh, in, in, in the projector. There will be person will be sitting, uh, you know, in front of you, you will be explaining everything. Uh, typically, you will be given 15 to 20 minutes to present it and at the, present, at the end of the presentations, people will ask you questions which you have to answer. So that is kind of typical presentation format which is being followed in different universities and uh, colleges that is called oral uh, presentation in a, in a conference. On the other way, uh, for poster presentations, you have to prepare a poster, one page poster, including all the figures, all the mathematical equations, table and all that will be that will be there in the in the poster. You have to put that poster in a you know poster board that will be given to you. And then you have to stand near that poster only. In the poster session, which is typically one to one and one and a half hour long, people who is interested in your work will approach you and then you have to explain your work to that particular person. So it may happen that you have to explain again and again your work to different person in different time period in that poster session. So that is the main difference. Uh, you will be given a longer time for poster sessions, but you have to explain again and again your work to different person. But in the oral format, you know, uh, typically you will be given 15 to 20 minutes with, within which you have to present your work to the audience. Now, for any conference, top 30% or 40% paper uh, is, is given the slot for both oral and poster presentation and the rest 70% or 60% paper is given just poster presentation. So that is the difference between uh, poster and oral presentation. So my last paper which was got accepted in AAA, I got both oral and poster but this time my paper is only accepted for uh, poster presentation that's why there is no uh, provision of giving a presentation uh, through slide. But you know at the end of this conference both all the papers will go for the preceding that means all the paper will be published by the conference and there will be no mention that you know which paper is a oral one or which paper is a poster one. So that is that's why there is no difference between this. This is just for the 
you know conference uh, sake of the conference presentations this difference is uh, made now coming to sharing the overall process and my experience of publishing this paper uh, so the idea actually was kind of an extension of what what are the work we are we are already doing on crystal graphs so i hope you all know that i work on uh, crystal graphs and i try to predict different properties of crystal graphs using graph neural network so graph level idea we are already working on and our previous two papers was on graph only and then we started thinking that whether we can include the information from other modalities that means whether we have uh, some images of crystals or if we have some textual description of crystal if we can get some information from those domains and include it into the graph and try to predict uh, different properties in a better way so that was kind of the kind of idea that we discussed and around last year this time only you know when i have already my uh, submitted my previous paper in nifs then i started working on this problem and the key challenge was again to get the data sets because uh, you know existing data sets are only graph based data sets but we didn't have image based data and the textual based data so initially we thought of going for the uh, image based approaches we started thinking of getting image data uh, from different tools so our collaborators who are actually experts in material science domain so they have given us some tools to generate uh, images and from where i have generated the images of the existing material that we already have so i have around 2 lakh data including different data sets and that's why i have generated 2 lakh images from each crystal now that was kind of you know the first two months was uh for this collecting data only and then my rebuttal for nifs comes and that paper got rejected the last paper got rejected uh, from nifs then i submitted to reply so for next one and a half or two months i got uh, defocused from this project and i fully focused on my previous project to publish it uh, in in some conference so there was a lag bit, uh, between uh, one and a half to two months then finally my last paper got accepted in triple a then i again you know moved back to this project and started working in this project fully uh, with full focus from december now you know initially you know we are not getting good result using image data actually the performance of graph uh, graph based models was degrading when we are including uh, image image data and image information into it now the problem of this kind of applied research or empirical research is that you know you don't know which will work basically in deep learning mo deep learning model these deep learning models they are kind of black box there is no scientific proof that you know, okay if you go this approach it will work and if you go this one this will, this will not work so what approach typically we follow is that you know we take a smaller data sets of all the all the uh, different uh, you know approaches we do small experiments and then we get a signal that okay maybe this approach will work and then we we'll scale it up so that was uh, kind of the setup was there and image was not working so that's why we started thinking of taking textual data again we uh, you know discussed with our collaborators and they have given us some tools to generate now the textual part or textual description of this materials and again you know it took me around one month to generate the textual uh, you know data for this a uh, whole data sets and then i run uh, the model again uh, using graph part and the textual part and now it's working better so that was kind of confirmation that okay now textual will help with with the graph and that's why you know now you know i started and that, this was around i think january mid uh, when i came back from indo ml and just uh, you know preparing to go for google research week so around that time only uh, i i had the initial result that textual data is working well with the graph data so i talked to my supervisor and he said okay let's submit it to the nearest conference that is uh, available and we found that uai is uh, there in 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 february uh, around end i think it is 20th february was the deadline for uai so i went to google research you can came back and then i started writing the paper within one week i have written the paper and some additional experiment also i have done that time and we have submitted this paper uh, into uai on 20th uh, february so that was kind of the uh, experimental part that initially we tried out with, with images it didn't work then we moved to textual part then there is a one month gap uh, so review takes place and then you know in the first week of april we got the rebuttal and that means the reviews from different review reviewers now the review was actually mixed initially so one reviewer was there who was very sure that is a good approach and and this problem is novel and all and he given us clear sort signal that this should be accepted and he given us rating 7 uh, 7 is the highest rating possible now there are two reviewers who are, who was given us just a weak accept or borderline accept that means they are not sure 
they are not rejecting the paper but they are not sure whether it's a good problem or not and there is on another guy who has given us weak reject or borderline reject that means uh, he is not sure and he is not on the side of the uh, acceptance uh, part but other he wants to reject it and there are a lot of comments they have given a lot of questions they have asked and i i, I have given two dedicated weeks um, for 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 you know giving my answer to that particular review so if you remember that there was no video in my channel in in april mid like from second week to third week and i posted one on that one community post that i am working on rebuttal so that was for this particular uh, conference only because uh, I was I was really focused so that I can give uh, proper comments for the reviews. So this is how things happen. I have given I have tried my best to give the best answer to the question that is raised by the reviewers. And at the end, uh, in the in the at the end of uh, April, I came to know that that reviewers who was not sure who was on the reject part. He has raised it to the accept accept part, and he has also given me seven. Now when there are four reviewers, two has given you. Full accept and two 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 is giving you borderline accept. That means your paper will uh, get accepted in in most of the cases. So that is the trend I have seen. This was the same uh, case in in my last paper also. There are two clear sort accept that means seven and two was kind of weak accept or borderline accept and my paper got accepted in uh, last uh, last conference that is April. Finally, you know, last uh, this week I, earlier this week I came to know that paper got accepted in the conference. So yeah, this was the overall experience. So um, I mean, this is my first uh, experience where I didn't get any rejection from any conference, and it, my paper got through a conference with the first sort only, first uh, you know submission only. Uh, that is also kind of experience for me because typically I used to think that you know, you know, my first attempt will be failed. Maybe in the second attempt I'll I'll get accepted. Maybe in the third attempt also I have to try. But this time I was super lucky that it got through. Uh, in my first attempt only obviously this work is not yet finished i mean this is kind of the first part of the work has, has done and we will be maybe doing a lot of work on the multi domal multi modal part of crystals in the coming years yeah that's it guys that's it about uh, the overall process of this paper and i am really excited to now visit to cmu as i was saying uh, this will be my first trip uh, outside india to any foreign country that to usa that to cmu and i'm really excited for that uh, so maybe i'll be visiting uh, like 28th or 27th july i didn't uh, decide it so there are a lot of things to do now because a lot of documentation a lot of uh, things i have to do i have to apply for a travel grant i have to book my ticket my visa is already there because you know last uh, conference though i couldn't attend that conference but that time only i have processed my visa uh, it came a bit late so that's why i didn't go to the last conference but i already have a visa for us so that part is done i don't have to apply for visa again but yeah obviously you know travel grant and ticket booking apply for pmrf grant everything i have to do now so for next uh, couple of couple of months will be a bit hectic for me along with my research work i have to do a lot of administrative work also but yeah i'll be going there and hopefully you know i'll be uh, i'll be having a great time there and i try to make some vlogs uh, when i'll be visiting this uh, great university cmu so yeah that's it about this video so if you have liked this video please like it and share this video to many other people and please let me know if you have any comments or any query regarding anything i mean regarding my channel i mean phd mtech whatever you want to ask me ask me in the comment section i will try to answer them and if you have any topic with uh, which you have you want me to make a video of let me know i'll try to make a video if possible and if you are new to this particular channel i'll suggest you or recommend you please go through my channel and if you find it helpful for you please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever i upload a video you will get instant notification that's it about this video i'll be meeting in the next video until then bye